A mysterious criminal who calls himself Eagle is plotting against the directors of an airplane factory whom he has tried to frighten with warnings written on the sky in smoke and fire. The directors have reason to suspect that the Eagle is Nathan Gregory, owner of a small carnival show, who has accused them of stealing from him an invention that is worth a fortune. Gregory's daughter, Jean, has found the Eagle's skywriting plane, which she now discovers is operated by radio control. While Jean is in the plane, the Eagle sends it up into the air and telephones Craig McCoy, Jean's friend, that he intends to crash the plane. Craig locates the Eagle's radio control room and makes a desperate effort to save the girl he loves. Denby, how did you get here? Why, the eagle had me locked in that closet. What happened to Jean? She's safe. I saw the plane land. Which way did he go? He went in through a lower window. Come on. Well, at last we know who the Eagle is. You know what? We know, but what good does that do us now? We can't prove it. We haven't any evidence. Say, who is that? Yeah, I've got it. We can use Kelly. Kelly? Well, he's scared stiff. He won't say a word. Yes, but the Eagle doesn't know that. We can bait a trap for him with Kelly and be there when he walks in. Don't you understand? Listen. No, it doesn't seem possible, but he's vanished into thin air. Seems that way, doesn't it? Well. And that'll prove his guilt beyond a doubt. Great. Stop right where you are. How good a ventriloquist are you? <laughs> the best in the world. Well, here's your big chance. Listen. Uh, a perfect setup. Are you sure you know your cue? Yes. When you say, unfortunately, Kelly's at death's door. Right. And then the eagle struck me down from behind. Then you didn't see his face? No. Too bad. We owe Mr. McCoy an apology for thinking that he was in league with this fiend. Oh, that's perfectly all right. Let's forget that and work together to get the Eagle. That's a good idea. You take the lead and we'll follow. And how do you propose to capture the Eagle, Mr. McCoy? I'll admit things look pretty black. But we have one faint hope in Kelly. But Kelly disappeared right after he was shot. He may be dead. No, he made his way to the carnival grounds. 
and fell in a faint in Mr. Gregory's tent. He came to once and started to tell everything, but he relapsed into unconsciousness again in a moment. If the doctors can bring him around, he'll tell us who the eagle is. But unfortunately, Kelly is a death door. And there isn't a chance in a thousand that he'll recover. Hello? Yes, he's here. It's for you. Hello? Yes? He has? Is he strong enough to talk? Phone police headquarters can get someone down there quick to take his statement. And don't let Kelly talk to anyone else. I won't, McCoy. I'll see that he conserves his strength. Good. He mustn't fail us now. Call me back, here. Kelly has regained consciousness. They're going to get the police a sworn statement. Oh, that's fine. Right. Great, fine. Good. Aren't you going to the carnival? Well, no, I'm going to wait here until they phone me who the eagle is. That's a good idea. Well, I've got a lot of work to do. Yes, sir, but there's no need for us to act like a lot of schoolboys. You will keep us posted on the development, Mr. McCoy. Certainly. Well, did it work? Perfectly. One of those four men is Eagle. Now, you'll try to get rid of Kelly before he can tell the truth, and I've got to beat him to the carnival. All right, I'll go with you. No, you wait here a few minutes. By then, the guilty man will be gone. You bring the other three along to the carnival. We'll need them for witnesses. Why? Well, here he is, Sergeant. What's it all about? Ah, oh, this guy's crazy. He kidnapped me and forced me to come here. He ain't got nothing on me. Oh, no? The next time you pick out a running mate, don't take a squealer like Gardner. They always welch on their pals when they get in a jam. Sergeant, this is Tim Moore. You know, the guy that Gardner squealed on. What do you mean, squealed on me? What do we mean? Gardner told the truth about how you shot Clark and Kelly. It's a lie. I didn't do it. And Gardner never said so. You don't think so, huh? Wait a minute. Hey, Gardner, Moore claims that he didn't do the shooting. He lies. I'm not going to take the rap for him. He killed Clark and tried to bump off Kelly. It's a lie. Boyle killed Clark and you shot Kelly, you. Why, Gardner's not in there. Why, you. Boys, how's that for a complete confession? Perfect. Well, being a ventriloquist has its uses. But, Kelly, you can clear yourself if you will talk. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Gregory, but I ain't gonna say a word until that eagle is behind the bars. So, you were going to tell them all that you know, were you, Kelly? Well, when the police come for your statements, you'll be beyond talking. Drop that gun! All right, Kelly, come on out. Good work, McCoy. Ward, Ward, I can't believe it. Now, Pat, will you tell us what you know? Well, Skipper, when you were reported dead after your ship cracked up behind the enemy lines, I went through your bags and discovered the plans of your invention. Yes, I sold them to Mr. Green and Mr. Danby, claiming they were my invention. Oh, I'm sorry, Skipper. 
When I found out you were alive, I could have killed myself. But I was ashamed to tell you. Yes, but what is all this to do with Ward? Well, he found out that the plans you men were making a fortune from were the ones I had stolen from Mr. Gregory. Now, that gave him a chance to blackmail you in the name of Gregory. Why? Why, his purpose was to make you sell out cheap. And he threatened to kill me if I said anything that would give him away. Stay back! Well, you know it all now, but you'll never take me alive. And as for you, Kelly, I always keep my promise. He made good his boast, and we'd never catch him alive. Well, Gregory, you have your revenge. I didn't want revenge. No, of course you didn't. All that you wanted was fair play, and you deserve it. Gentlemen, there's 20% of the capital stock of our company still unissued. I move you that it be transferred to Mr. Gregory as overdue payment on his invention. And I second the motion. And I vote yes. That makes it unanimous. Thank you, my friends. Daddy! <laughs> here, here, wait a minute. After all, I'm only an innocent bystander. Here's the man we have to thank for our success. 